all praises to the Most High. Hallelujah. Giving honor and glory. Greetings, family. I pray all is well. So this video here is a video that I feel led to share to bring more insights that will line things up with Kemet, what's on the walls of Kemet, and what we um, know of today as, I want to share a little bit about Goshen, a virus um, that lines up which we understand uh, Goshen lines up with um, the Israelites because they were in, say, in Goshen, Goshen, and which a virus, a virus is in the same, pretty much in this, kind of sort of in the same area, and I'll show a map of that. Um, so then what links... Uh, a virus to the Israelites supposedly is Joseph, right? And they said they found uh, the 12, you know, different seals or, or Joseph seals that shows about the 12 different tribes, which my understanding in on the continent of Africa, each tribes have totems. And those are different things like Judah, lion, you know, um, and, and so forth like that. So, um, let's get to it. Okay. So what you see here is, um, you see lower Egypt and you see Goshen there. Um, you see a virus right, uh, above Goshen, which says, um, Ra, Ramesses, uh, um, what else you see there? It's a cult. Um, so this is where, um, of course we understand that say Joseph, according to the scriptures had, uh, received from the Pharaoh that, you know, would get land there. Okay. Then I'm going to show you, um, another map and where it says a virus is at, but look at where it says lower Egypt. Remember the Nile um, River, and notice that the lower Egypt is above the upper Egypt. So, when you traveling, you traveling, you should be, you know, cause, because the map is known to be turned upside down. So, when the map is turned upside down, it's it's known that the being um, what we see South Africa today, that's actually showing the way the map should be at the top. South Africa should be at the top. And then as we go down the map towards Egypt, Kemet, then you'll see where um, upper Egypt, then lower Egypt. So what's, what, what sense that would make for what we understand the way the map is today, that lower Egypt is above upper Egypt. That means that should tell us that's, that's a sign that they do have the map turned upside down. But anyway, just wanted to point that out. Okay, so to give you another account too um, of a virus, a virus right here, it's uh, under a tennis uh, uh, and a tijara, a tijaru. Then over here to the right, they have here that a virus is in the delta was the capital of the Hyksos kings of the second intermediate period. Okay, uh, the fortified city was built over the middle kingdom town they had captured. They built a Canaanite style temple. Okay, so this is all what they're saying that they um, actually took on. So then I'm going to take you to another area where um, the area called Tel... I want to say tell the W um, I'll get there and you'll see the account where they're trying to connect um, Joseph there in that area. So Goshen is Goshen is up, which we're considering in the lower Egypt and this other place, it would be considered to me in the upper Egypt. 
but they're trying to connect Joseph, the Israelites, to this area. Um, and then is another article shows that they're saying the Hyksos people is really the Israelites, but who give an account for that? Josephus, um, and also someone from Israel give an account for that back in, you know, far as not Josephus, but this person from Israel. And I'll show that a little bit about that. But, um, Josephus to me is not, um, a reliable source because what I found out early on, probably a year or so ago, that he is a made up. Josephus is a made up. He's a character that, um, one of the elites, um, people who had their, you know, pull to add to the Bible or take away from the Bible in the New Testament, that family that was behind it all is known to be an alias. Well, Josephus is like, you know, an alias to him. So um, it's just a, a circle of just webs of, you know, just lies and deceit. It's just so much. So let's go there. Okay, so here on this map is basically pointing out that Tel El Daba and Avaris and Goshen is basically, they're saying like a point in trying to say in the same places, but on some maps, I've seen it in different places, somewhat, you know, not too far. I want to say in distance, but still yet, yeah, this is the narrative that is being put forth. Okay, family, I had showed this last night and what, you know, they're trying to make it to what I'm getting, um, Israel relevant um because the people that call themselves jews and say they're the chosen people they have carried the name israel and when you go back out of side of the bible to prove this to be uh you know truth or any historical facts it shows that it's nothing really to stand on that um and what they said that that was proof that was coming out of egypt there are other uh people have came along and say that is not what it says on that stone that is called Israel, that Israel was laid to waste. It was speaking about another city called Jazarel, Jazarel. Okay. So this is something else that I came across because I was looking for any insights about the 12 tribes um, to see, because we are so indoctrinated in that. And we, you know, um, has been, um, uh, at, I know at the forefront of what a lot that I've been talking about, speaking about the 12 tribes. So it's like, what is the origins? So if this all is true about, you know, being that our people, you know, uh, are these people that the Bible have uh, separated, but they are the same people. Like I said, you know, the Egyptians, the Israelites that, you know, that really lines up with the Bantu, the um Canaanites that really line up with the Bantu, the Egyptians that really line up with the Bantu. Um, we were given in the Bible three different names. I'm just naming these three off the top. There's many others. And I would consider those by words. But however, um, in the separation of them, them all, they were rivals against each other. Okay. So I'm going to show a clipping from a brother, um, uh, Dr. Kawizi, who, um, like I said, have been on the forefront going to Kemet for now almost 40 years, and he have had chance to study and learn um, to read the, uh, which we understand that they call the hieroglyphs, okay? Um, so he's going to give an account about the Hyksos people and actually what happened from what he's able to read off of the walls of Egypt, okay? So when we get to a place to understand, to reference to the Bible, to reference to the Bible, come out of the Bible and want proof for mere fact of what has been given to us in the Bible. You may ask yourself, or one may ask themselves, what would tie us to the Bible to make us not want to come out of it? Well, the scriptures, the words that say that, you know, by, you know, not seeking the word because the word is God and God would say, you know, is the word then you're like, well, why well, I'm going to come out when the the papers 
in the, within the Bible and the words on it is of God or is God. Or anything that can link our people not to come out. You know, one may say or ask themselves why I'm not coming outside of the Bible to check out the sources, the resources. We have many researchers in our community of what one may call the Hebrew Israelites and the Bantu. And a lot of it, what I see is, is that certain things got once tied into or put in position because of what, you know, the circulation around certain scriptures, right? But still yet, I have to respect that in the most high time and, and understand that, you know, is it not their time to wake up to new understanding or is it that they're not seeking the most high for what they need to seek the most high for? I don't know, but I'm want to say that it's just not their timing yet. Okay. So I shared this a little bit last night and it was talking about the seal of Joseph and this put them, the Israelites, um, supposedly in this area. And as you see all these different what now I understand is totem. You see the ram, you see the lion, um, and you see, you know, different things, the scale, um, and everything. So this, this, uh, is, a, a message that was, um, which was written by, uh, someone from Israel. Okay. So what I could, um, you know, well, what I want to say is that, is it any merit to this? You know, is it any truth to what this person is saying? Because they're linking everything back to trying to make it make sense that Israel is really um, this real place it was before. Are so many ways. Let's 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 back up a bit. The whole thing is when um, our people got this. Um, came out of Egypt, supposedly, as a, according to the scriptures, and went into the land of Canaan. Well, the land of Canaan was never called Israel. But it's so ironic that Father would give the land to um, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. And ain't none of them, um, you know, in so many ways, enjoy the land and, and claim the land to be where they are the, the ones ruling the land. But, okay, one may say, well, Jacob was given the name Israel. Okay, well, even in his timeline, he didn't change it to Israel. It didn't get changed to Israel until these people came back, came not back, but came in 1948. That just, that's just really stands out as a, a something that's an add up. okay? So I'm not really going to touch on this too much here. There's a lot of reading and so forth, and you all come to, I'll share the link. But at the end of the day, um, they're just trying to justify that, oh, these seals were found of the different tribes in this area of Egypt. But then what about these seals and are um, these different totems found in the land of what they call Israel today? They would have had articles and articles about that if that was the case. So let's move forward. Okay, this is another article here um, that was written by this person. What is Manfred um, B. B. Atak, a B. Atak, and the Hebrews Israelite four room houses in a virus. So they're connecting it to the last article I just actually shared. And when you come down to the line here with one, and you see that the Hyksos occupation of North. Egypt and their, you know, explosions as recorded by Josephus, that's a red flag. So I'm not even going to take any time. I haven't looked through it, but I'll share it with you all so you can look through it yourself. But I'm going to take us now to where well, this brother is bringing forth, uh, I truly believe truth of what this all is, because um, you imagine you right now, your name say is... Um, Alexander and they said that you have a line of 20 generations of this and you all have done great for the community you all have made a name have 
books written about you, have, um, you know, wealth behind your name, live in, you know, this house that has been passed on generation. And then 20 years from now, 100 years from now, to say someone comes decide to, you know, come in and say, no, no, these people didn't exist because they want to rewrite history and they want to take your history out of the equation. And they want to add or it could be the opposite of someone trying to create something to make it make it sense. And early on when I was reading the Bible, I want to say when I started seeing that, you know, of course, studying about the, the letter J and how that came into play. And if they could change that in the Bible, what else could they change? You understand? And when, you know, you see the word Jew, when you see the word Jesus and so forth like that. And I had, you know, felt early on that it felt like these people had an agenda. Okay. These were a certain sector of people who knew one day that they were going to venture out from, um, this because the people that the really story was based on will be like they're remembering, I'm sorry, the, the remembrance of them remembering anything will be gone due to whatever and however, um, far as due to what one may say sin or they will move on or migrated out of a certain area, then they will take on the names of this. So this to me, the benefit of who is benefiting from someone being called Israelite this day, not Israelites, but Israel, Israeli, uh, is Israeli are being on the land and, you know, millions and billions of dollars being sent to these people monthly, or if not, um, you know, yearly, however the situation is, who is benefiting from this? You going back in time to understand how they converted into and, and and say that they were Hebrews all the way back and then coming up to now. It's like this was already it's like was a set up in that lineup. But again, can't take my eyes off the most high and say how this all came into play. Respectfully, you know, saying, well, father, you saw it, you you seen it. And, and I want to say that the most high allowed this because this is what was in the making and was in the plan of all this one day will come to surface and we will understand more. Okay. Let me go down here and see if anything I want to read here. They uh, say here, it says this proof, um, that the Hyksos were the Hebrew Israelites. Um, and actually they'd still pull in information from the source of Josephus, still not reliable to me. And from the area where they say that they said the seals of the people of the 12 tribes, which is connected to the Hyksos. So the Hyksos people that you'll hear in the next video, uh, the, you know, when I come back for it on, um, I'm just going to pause for a minute and get that up, but you'll see what that is. Okay. One moment. Okay. So as you see here, this is the invasions um, of the Battle of Kemet, Egypt from the ancient temples. Okay, so um, again, the temples were were said that it was burned down in what we know the land say is Israel today. So that's why they don't have the temples. But family, all the temples were in Egypt, Kemet. And you'll get more clarity and there are other videos on this as well. So let's get, let's get started. Before, you know, uh, we have to use visual documentation to bring this back for other brothers and sisters to see it because they may not never make it back like you. But there were many invasions that came into Africa. When Norma that we dealt with earlier, we talk about Norma when he reunited Upper and Lower Egypt, first defeating the Scorpion, bringing together the first world government. But it spoke of the Asiatic invasions, even back during his time, Egypt faced many invasions that came in by way of the Delta. These were the Asiatics that you see right here. Now, as I mentioned before, the Asiatics who came across the Sinai. So here we see the earliest recording of these people who came in and settled with us for a while, to they built in numbers, and then eventually attacking Egypt. This is again from Kanunhotep's tomb from the 12th dynastic period, right uh, during the time of Amenhotep III. 
Here again, Menethos talks about, now you can see the Hyksos who came into Egypt. And Menethos said, unexpectedly from the region of the east came men of unknown race. Confident of the victory, they marched against our land. By force, they took it easy without a single battle. Having overpowered our rulers, they burned our cities without compassion. The temples. All the people were treated with great cruelty, for they slew some and carried off the wives of children of others into slavery. Doesn't that sound like a familiar account? This period. Okay, so doesn't that sound familiar, like what in the Bible says about our people? But it happened in the land of Kemet. Let's continue. It is documented around uh, 1650 or 1750, right around the same time of Abraham. Now, take a good look of the pictures that I showed earlier too. These were the hike soaks that you see right here. These were the invaders, just as you see them carved in stone right here. These are the people who came out of the Sinai, some say from Mitanni, uh, some say they were Horians. These are the Tamarians who were indigenous to the Nile Valley, as well as the Tanihisian brothers who were further up in the southern part of uh, Egypt, or Kemet, ancient Ethiopia as some would call it. These were the Tamahu people who invaded from Libya from the west. They attacked Egypt after the sixth dynastic period. Now, it was, it was this brother that we showed again, Atmos the first, who finally expelled them out of our land. Now, I'm showing in reference with the temple how our ancestors, you're witnessing, recording these people who came into our land, who invaded until Atmos the first finally expelled them. We want to give you documented evidence to show you that we were at war with these people who invaded our land. We did not have anyone enslaved, but in fact, the Hyke Soaks enslaved us for 200 years. If we deal with the 21st dynasty, 22nd dynasty, 23rd dynasty, these were all Asiatic, Shishak. So 200 years. So could that be the lineup of the 200 years are surrounding that time that supposedly that our people were in Egypt and they left? Supposedly when they said the, the Hebrew Israelites. Let's continue. The Badawi will show us in a little while. He was also of Asiatic origin. So again, indigenous African Kemetic people were not even on the throne then. This is why this is so important to understand this in the Bible, because by looking at the Bible in America and the Western world, they look at this as all being part of Egypt, not saying that we were enslaved ourselves by these Asiatic people. And the same people who are ruling us today, who are exploiting us out of our minds, are the same people who invaded our land long ago, who came in even during the time of the 12th dynastic period, right after a minute ahead. And we called them the troglodytes who came out of the desert. How can we dispute this documented evidence, documented information? But the only way we're going to get this story right, we're going to have to start writing our own holy text because if everybody else have had their story and revised the Bible, then why can't we, the original writers of the book, bring it back to its African origin? Now right here on these temples here, now you can see documented where we tied them up, roped them, and forced them out of our land. These are the people that we've always had problems with. The problem is we don't understand a historical war. It's a historical war with these people. And European Ashkenazi, European Jews know this. We're the people who don't know it. It's an ancient historical war from the time we've had contact with them. So we're coming back here and hearing the words of our ancestors and those who knew what happened in that day, and that's why they had to turn the story against African people. Mm. So you're coming back for an eyewitness account, not for spiritual enslavement, but for spiritual freedom, for the emancipation of our souls, for the resurrection of African people. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. For many years, brothers and sisters returned back with us on the Kemet New Know Thy Self Educational Tour to see an eyewitness account what our ancestors wrote for us on the temples and tombs which are books and stone that now end up in many of the biblical stories today. Let's continue with the live lecture. These are the people who enslaved our people. These people set up in an area of Kemet in Lower Kemet called Avaris, took over, and were enslaving the Africans for over 200 years until Second Enray Tao of the 17th dynasty, and it is he who raised war on the battlefield, and his life was lost on the battlefield, and it was his son, Katmos, who continued the battle until his son, uh, Atmos, who opened up the 18th dynasty. This is a real person, brothers and sisters, who said never again. He was the liberator, the emancipator, who kicked these Hicksoaks out of our land. This is the real historical account that we've got to start teaching our people, brothers and sisters. So they took from this African right here his name, Atmos, and made a Moses. This is the only account 
that we expelled a large group of people out of our land, this African right here, who opened up the 18th dynasty, you know, the Golden Age. This is the historical account, brothers and sisters. In fact, let's go into another warrior soldier, as we see in his uh, name, Men Kepara, Tahuti Maze. He had 17 battles and won them all. He also wanted to make sure that these Hicksoaks were not going to come into our land. Here you see Men Kepara's battle, showing where he's battling the Hicksoaks. Look at some of them hiding behind trees as cowards right here. This is the story that our ancestors left us in stone, as though they knew that one day we would forget our story. Here's the battle of Men Kepara, who battled and wanted to make sure these Hicksoaks were not going to come into our land. In fact, this brother, he made sure that he even educated these people he was conquering into the Kemetic uh, history, okay, initiated them into a make sure that they will keep control of people that they're conquering. So that brother was brilliant. In fact, he put a whooping on a city so bad called Megiddo. Do you know this is where the name Army getting from came from, Megiddo right here? That's where the origin of that name came from. But this is the brother, Osama Art Ross of Tepin Rawa Mesumori Amin, a little practice you can say it too. He also had to fight some people called the Hittites. See, we're constantly at war with these people coming from the north, brothers and sisters. We left the reliefs over 3,000 years ago carved in stone. In fact, there's one story right here where Ursula Atra told his generals, he said, cut off the right hand of the enemy. But he noticed that the right hand and the left hand was turning up. He told them to cut off the right hand to make sure that they weren't cowards. So he said, the enemy only has one of one thing I know they got, and that's the penis, the foreskin. So he told them to cut off the foreskin, and that's what you see right here, the foreskin right here. These are stories and accounts that's carved on these temples, brothers and sisters. Our story is here. Now, what does that have to do with the scriptures? Well, let's go to Samuel, and it talks about David wants to marry the daughter of uh, Saul. So Saul tells him to go and do what? Cut off the foreskin of the Philistines, as it says in uh, Samuel chapter 18, verse 27. Wherefore David arose and went, and he and his men, and slew of the Philistines. 200 men, and David brought their foreskins, and they gave them the full tale to the king, that he might uh, be the king's son-in-law. So, here you got it written here in Saul, but long before Saul, our ancestors cut off the foreskin, where Ramesu told his generals to cut off the right hand, and he noticed right and left hands were turning up, and he told them to cut off the foreskins, where it ended up in Saul in the Bible. What makes uh, somebody who just... Put it on some paper versus that which is carved in stone. Spiritual enslavement. <laughs> okay. So, of course, we know the storyline about, let's say, the covenant with men that they will actually circumcise themselves. Um, so we know about that, say, the covenant where that will take place. But it's on the walls of Egypt family as well. So um, I know this, you know, maybe to some say, well, okay, this is just, it's just either too much or this is not right for me right now or ever. I don't know what, whoever will listen to this. I can only say I feel led to share it. So it's for someone could be one or many in this day or what's our or, or, or days to come that the spiritual realm of say what you experience in knowing who the most high is your spiritual relationship your personal that should be the foundation because as truth come in or a different way of you understanding comes in or the different way you heard it, you know, from what you always knew, the anchor of it all is the most high. Your personal relationship to know. And only thing we can say, Father, why? Why we have been taken in this manner is this true of this? And each person would need to seek for themselves and go on their journey as well or carry on within their journey if they already started. Well, family, that's all I have. 
uh, just want to give you some different, um, you know, insights of what I came across. And there's something else I came across about the 12 families of Atlantis. So the story is known out there about 12 this or 12 that. So um, you can look that up yourself if you want to um, read into that. But at the end of the day, um, when, you know, looking at the ones on the continent, there are ones that came forth and say, well, yeah, these are the 12 kingdoms. These all line up with the most high and so forth in that. Well, when you hear the storylines and I haven't heard one who can name out, well, who is according to Yacobi, who Yacobi or Yacobi from the Bible name, which we know speak in English, Jacob. Did, did he have a, a twin brother? Did he have 12 sons and one daughter? And where are these people at today? Where, where, where is Judah Berry? Where is Simeon Berry? Where is Dan Berry? We, we got to ask these questions, family, to get to a better place. And that place is getting closer unto the most high. All this is to get us closer, family. It's not to get us a, a bowl, a bucket of gold at the end. It's for us to get closer to the most high. Why the most high is allowing this in, in this, I don't know. But one day we will understand. Take care, family. Love you all. And get to Matando.